Do you love spy books, movies, and TV? Then the Spybrary podcast is for you. Since 2017, host Shane Whaley and Spybrary field agents around the world dispatch reviews and interviews with authors, historians, and fellow spy fans. We discuss everything from John le Carre, Len Dayton, Paul Vidic, Graham Greene, Mick Heron, Charles Cumming, Ben McIntyre, and, and many more. Spybrary is available on all good podcast apps and at spybrary.com. Hello and welcome to Spybury. Today we're talking about a favorite Spybury TV shows, that of The Sandbaggers. And we've got a special Intel episode. An Intel episode is a very, very quick episode where we've got some important news to share and we want to get this out to you because in a couple of weeks time there is a Sandbaggers virtual event and we've invited on one of the head honchos over at the Sandbaggers online community to come and share more with us about this event that will celebrate 45th anniversary of the Sandbaggers. Welcome back to Spybury, Paul Hodges. How are you, sir? Thank you, Shane. Doing very well. Fantastic. So share more with us. What have you got cooking for us Sandbaggers fans? Sure. Uh, our Sandbaggers Facebook group been around 15 years. We've never done, as you mentioned, a uh, group virtual event. So we've decided to do one in uh, in honor of the 45th anniversary of the show, first airing in the UK, which was later this month. As uh, I think you may have mentioned, the actual session will be October 7th, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. You can adjust it from there. Uh, and we have a uh, somewhat robust agenda, bringing in people that were involved in the program, bringing in people that were in influenced by the program, and then we'll have some discussions by fans about items that were uh, related to the program. So our two keynote speakers are number one, Roy Marsden, who was the lead actor in the series. Roy played Neil Burnside, uh, Diops, on the program for all 20 episodes. And then we have Greg Rucka, who uh, authored uh, what I would call a, a reboot of the series, um, or at least inspired by the series. That's a series of graphic novels and novels uh, that relate around the title of Queen and Country, which modernizes the show maybe to around the year 2000, which is around when uh, that series was started. Uh, on top of that, we'll look at uh, some items submitted by our fan base that they wanted to talk about. Uh, Ian McIntosh and what he did before the Sandbaggers and what led him to have the skills and ability to write that show because he comes from an intelligence background. Uh, and he also did a number of other programs before the Sandbaggers. Uh, I will talk about the Sandbaggers legacy, reviewing five or six programs, media things, actually one of the uh, uh, podcasts that you actually put together for us, Shane, that were influenced by the Sandbaggers over the years to see how that legacy has continued. Um, and then uh, we've got a, uh, a special thing that I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because we want to announce it there at the thing, but we have a, a member who has done some very good work in uh, continuing the Sandbaggers uh, media, let's say, and I'll let him uh, review that there at the session. So it's two hours on October 7th. Cool. So it kicks off at 11 o'clock Eastern time, um, yep. 8 a.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. British time. Uh, yep. And it's via Zoom, correct? Uh, yes, it is via Zoom. Uh, the information can be found. Uh, it has not been posted yet because we're staging the information out there. It will be out there in about a week at the Sandbaggers uh, Facebook group. Uh, so you can search for Sandbaggers Yorkshire Television and you should be able to bring it up. Please feel free to join the group. Uh, you can visit and see it. Um, and the invitation is open for all, not just people that are part of uh, that group, but in groups in general. And I think, as you know, Shane, I posted a quick blurb on it in yours and would, I will post the co connection information same. Excellent. And I will also share those links to your community, uh, which our listeners can find at spybury.com forward slash sandbaggers. If you go there, there is a link to Paul's community. How can fans, uh, so during this event, how interactive is it going to be, Paul? Like, How can fans participate and engage during the uh, event? Excellent question. So we do have 120 minutes and we have a lot to fit in those 120 minutes. So it will not be open. It will not be an open discussion thing because we are expecting to have several hundred people there. So we have a to you know control this, a group that size. Each of the keynote speakers will talk about the show, how they got involved, what it meant to them and what it's meant to their career um, or how they were influenced by it in terms of uh um, Greg. And what we will do is we'll have a Q&A at the end of their sessions. Uh, for the other three topics we talked about, we're probably not going to take Q&A 
during the thing. But if we have time left over at the end, that's fine. And we'll also have a Q&A submission process too. Brilliant. Um, can you share with us what was Marsden's response to being invited onto a virtual event that's covering the sandbaggers? Uh, he, w- he was happy to do so. Um, I have talked to Roy in the past, but never one-on-one until this week when we finally had a phone call. Yeah. But it's been email to email, and he really works in the email type arena. So, you know, it's send information, and then uh, he will he responds back within a week or two, and that's fine. And then uh, was happy to do so. Um, didn't want a lot of pre-prep, and that's not a bad thing. You know, he didn't want pre-submitted questions. He's like... I'll discuss the three topics you want. And what I'd like to do is take questions from the fans. Yeah, that's pretty brave when you consider how long ago this was filmed. Absolutely. But, but but again, I don't want to speak for him. It was a key event in his career that was really, in, in, in my view at least, I'll give you my personal view, his first starring role. So that launched him to basically from that point on only having starring roles when he did in something. So I think it was very important to him. But it's still and, like 43 uh, years and, ago, and, right? And Greg Rucka, just for a second, yeah. since you mentioned Roy, was very excited to be involved, was yeah. very gracious, uh, almost honored that I would invite him. And frankly, I was more honored that he said, yes, he would participate. So I thought it was real good. Yeah, I'm always amazed when actors can recall things that they've made. I mean, you think about it, this is 40 odd years, well, yeah. 45 years. And you, know, you often yeah. see it on bonus content on DVDs where the poor actor is not prepped, right? And they're really struggling to remember. Oh. And they're like, oh, that's so-and-so. And uh, is he still alive? And you're like, oh, come on, get yeah, with it. Yeah. But, you know, it's a yeah. long, long, long yeah. time ago that they yeah. filmed this. Um, based on the success of the event, because I know it will be a success, do you have any plans for future events for Sandbagger Community? Uh- Another another very good question. Actually, I'm going to put that out at the end of the session to the member base. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was talking about time treasure, time treasure and talent. Right. So it takes that to put something like this together. Yeah. Right. So this one has been pretty much done by a couple of us based on our love and joy of the program. Um, if the membership wants to continue this, and I think we need to formalize it a little more with a budget and people having specific roles and having you know items, let's say assigned out to individuals but you know if we do one that's great if this becomes the first of a series and we do it quarterly as i'm just you know pulling that out of the air that's completely fine i think it would be great yeah absolutely and there was a a, an in-person event many years ago correct sandbagger one are you referencing yes or yes yes so that's why thank you that's why this is called sandbagger two and you're the third individual that caught that shade so uh there was a convention in the early 90s in new jersey not too far from where i lived unfortunately i was not aware of it otherwise i would have, would have been in the in the front row as you can imagine it was called sandbagger two so when i was when i was uh uh, titling this one i said we'll call it oh, that was called sandbagger one we'll call this one sandbagger two and we'll see uh who catches it but now the cat's out of the bag and that's okay yeah so. and ray lauren attended that one correct sandbagger yes one. he did yes yeah. he did yep i i did yeah. like that in your community and and the the sandbaggers online community is spybury approved i enjoy going in there if you're a fan of the sandbaggers um you know do make sure you're there and there was a wonderful thread the other day where someone had spotted that i think it was ray lonan's wife had found an old vcr tape of a series that he had recorded and someone had posted that in your community and it was kind of cool to see that even actors write over and tape over it it, it was it it was i think i made a i think i made a comment chain first off i thought it was funny that uh, not that an actor shouldn't record over but i guess i wouldn't have the 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 visual that they would be doing that that's the kind of stuff i was doing back then right yeah yeah yeah. And um, and what's interesting is if you read through further in that thread, there are a number of series these people are involved in that. No, again, I'm not saying the original content doesn't exist. No one knows where it is, including the actors and actresses that were in that. So for that series, that is the only, according to them, the only known content of it. I didn't even know that series existed. So that was completely news to me when when uh, Ferrix, who's one of the presenters, actually posted that yeah. the other day. So you. So. You said you got you expect a couple of hundred to rock up for your event, and bearing in yeah. mind the series had a relatively short run, why do you think, or how do you think, it's managed to maintain such a loyal following over the years? Well, 
again, Shane, that's all what that's what we're going to share in the program but in this session, but that's completely fine. Um, I think it is the fine writing of Ian McIntosh's mm-hmm. that really made it very realistic. And it's the it's the anti James Bond. And that's nothing against James Bond. Right. Mm. But this is the hey, I, I, I'm in the second floor dungeon of a government building that hasn't been rehabbed in 20 years. And I've got to now go do my work. And then. And, and I'm pushing paper and doing analyses. And then tomorrow I have to go out in the field and that can be dangerous. Right. Yeah. So I think the writing of how he did it was seemed to me very realistic. And the people in the community, because you'll find a number of our members are from the intelligence community. And that's the first thing they say. They go, this is the most realistic portrayal of what we do. <laughs> so I start with that. And then you had fine acting, fine production, you know, and the whole nine yards. Um, and, and I think one of the things you'll see, and again, I'm not going to spoil what the things we're going to announce is, but one of the items we did look at are the sets and the items created for the program. And all I ever hear was this was done on the cheap. People were mortgaging their apartment or something to do that. Absolutely not. When you see the number of sets that were created to film this program, you know, I, I, it tripled the number I thought, you know, I look at, oh, that's just another room. That's just another room. Each one of those other rooms were especially unique done for that specific sequence right so and that was really impressive so i think it was done very well too so overall i think that's kept the passion brilliant for those of us who might be working on that day or have other commitments are you intending on recording the event for for those to to watch it later on we are. And I've gotten a couple questions over that. And, and so, yes, we are. And obviously anyone's welcome to watch the watch the recording. Um, I would ask the people that are interested if they can to go to see it live, because first off, that gives them the opportunity to engage if they need to or want to. But we're a, secondly, global, we, we're a global podcast, Paul. So there's going to be our Australian uh, agents going to be well, like, I can't get up middle of the oh, night for that. Oh, so. oh, oh, Shane, Shane, I've had a number of people from Australia goes, I guess I'm setting my alarm for whatever yeah. time it is. I don't know. But 2 a.m. or whenever it is, 11 p.m., they intend on attending live. So I, at least some have told me they are. Um, but I, I, I think it's uh, – um, uh, yeah, at the, at the end of the day, I think it'll, I think it'll be exciting. It'll be good. It'll be focused, and that's what they're looking for. So marvelous. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for pulling this event off. You know, I'm someone who loves bonus content on DVDs. I love the actor perspective, the writer perspective. Mm-hmm. So you know, getting more out of the shows that we love and the movies that we love. So uh, very excited for this initiative, and thank you to you and your team for putting it together, Paul. Sure. Uh, Great, as, and thank you for helping us publicize it. So. Not a problem. Um, as I say, you can find out the link at spybury.com forward slash sandbaggers. On that link, you'll also find the three previous roundtables that we've hosted uh, around each season, a season in-depth review of the sandbaggers. You can find that at that link as well. So uh, thanks very much for joining us at short notice, Paul. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you, Spybarians, for listening in to today's Quick Intel episode. Look, I'm not going to lie, putting these events together, they take a lot of work. Paul and Zoe and the rest of the Sandbaggers crew are working really hard to pull this event off. So please try and support them by attending this event. Because if it is well attended, then Paul and Zoe and others will be inspired and motivated to, to run more events. Uh, and I know anyone who's a fan of sandbaggers just can't get enough. So do check that out. Links over at spybree.com forward slash sandbaggers. And if you enjoyed today's episode, if you enjoy the content we put out on Spybree, do come and join us in our online community. There's over 3,000 of us sharing what spy books we're reading, what we're enjoying, what we're not enjoying, what covers we love, etc. And you can find that at spybree.com forward slash community. See you on the other side. Thanks for listening to the Spybrary Podcast. You don't have to wait for the next episode. Join the conversation happening now at facebook.com slash spybrary and on Twitter at spybrary.